Screwbox here. On this tutorial, we're going to go over procedurally generated tile maps in Godot. We're going to set up an environment with procedurally generated items. We're going to have a character that moves around and picks them up. We're going to have um, a counter on the screen that shows what's picked up. And we're also going to have an animated uh, tile on the tile map. Let's get started. Okay, let's go over the scene. There's a HUD in the corner. There's a uh, tile map called a lava pool. And then there's a player, which is just a sprite that runs around. And we also have three other tile maps, stone, dirt, and environment. If we run it, we can see the stone is this gray area here. The dirt is the brown on top of it. The environment are all the little rocks and flowers. Let's go over the code real quick. So we're going to be using the open simplex noise. It's kind of a random noise generator. We're going to do a map of 512. So if we look at our um, window width size is 512 and our tile size are 16. So the map size is going to be the 512 divided by 16. So our tile map fills the entire screen and our tiles are 16 size 16 by 16 size uh, we have a dirt border that just kind of puts a little bit of border around the tiles so they don't touch the wall uh, we have an environment chance which is 50 percent we have dirt caps and this is just a variable that says uh, where the dirt is compared to the stone and then we have some variables that hold our tile maps uh, first let's go over the um, make stone map Right, so this is this one. This is going to be the gray one, and it's just going to loop through the map size, and it's going to set the uh, stones to zero, and then it's going to call this update bit, bit mask. So let me show you the tile set real quick. So um, it is a tile set that has kind of it's a three by three minimal tile set. And if we look at, we expand it a little bit, we can see um, the bitmax that's on it. And I can go over that in a different tutorial, but basically where the, uh, the, the red is, is what'll determine where the tiles go. Okay. And then we have to call that update this map bit mask to put it in the right spot. And I'll show you in a second. If you don't do that, what happens? And the next thing we do is have the make dirt map. So we have that tile map here. And this tile set is basically the same as the gray one, but brown and with gray borders, because it's inside that. And the bit mask is also the same. So with this, with this, oh, I forgot to mention this is an auto tile. And so with the auto tiles, it'll it'll determine what it looks like depending upon what the neighbors are. So it's going to loop through there. It's going to make sure that the tile map is not on the the border width that we have. So it's going to give it a, a little bit of a border of one around all the gray before it puts the brown in. It's going to look at that open simplex noise and get a random noise from there. So that, that value is, is either between negative one and one. So we're only going to use the ones that are positive. And then it also is going to check, we have a, that dirt cap variable so that it doesn't put dirt everywhere. So it's not 100%, but it's, it makes kind of a randomness. And then we, again, have that update bitmask region so it goes back and calculates the auto tile. So if we run it, you can see the, where the brown is there, and it kind of figures out what, it, what tile it needs to use, basing on the auto tile. And if we don't do that um, updating of the update bit mask region I'll show you what happens it'll just use the the first tile in all cases so just be that corner tile over and over and over again so it doesn't do the auto tile okay we'll put that back in there and the next is the environment one this is the ones with the stone and the or the rocks and the flower so it's going to put rocks on the stone and flowers on the dirt 
So it has the same logic as the previous one, as the make dirt one, um, with some extra in there where it has a, a random chance of putting the flower or the stone. So we have this variable up here, which we have 50%. So 50% of the time, it's going to put a either a rock or a flower. So the, if we look at our tile set, we have only two defined. So zero is rocks, but we have the name rock there. And that one is flower, and that is one. So we use um, one for the flower and zero for the rock. And that again determines if we're, depends on if we're on dirt or stone. Right, and let's say we, we put that percentage way down to 10%, then you'll see just the environment only puts a few randomly placed for us flowers and rocks. If you put it really high, like 99%, then it almost covers the entire map. With a few exceptions. Okay. So next, we are going to um, look at the HUD. So the HUD is just a canvas layer, the start, so it kind of sticks to the top left. Um, we put in a little gray background here so that we can distinguish the letters from the tile maps behind it. They're just a color rec that's brown, or that's, that's gray, and it has alpha about 50%. So nothing complicated there, just a little bit of color behind the, the little HUD unit. And then we have a image of a flower in the flower texture rec, and we have a stone texture rec with the image of a stone. And then we have two labels, one for the, the count on the flowers and one for the count on the stones. Okay. And the player is just a simple kinematic body 2D with the collision shape and a sprite on it. There we go. And so we, we use the WSD keys to move them around. So there is script in, on top of the player and that, that script is basically the example inside the Google Docs or inside the Godot Docs that say how to do player movement. So nothing complicated there. And then um, finally, we have this method in here that says check player environment. So if the player position is on top of a tile that it can pick up, like a flower or a stone, and if the if the cell ID is not is like a positive number, then we know that there's something underneath it. Otherwise, it skips it. And then we go in there and we say get tile by name, and we pass it the cell ID that we just found at that coordinate. Right, so if we go back here, we see that there's a name value there. So if the name is flower, then we're going to add it to our count. And we have a um, script here that has the uh, dictionary for a flower and rock count. And I have an extra variable here that I didn't erase, so I'm just going to add a note to myself not to use this. And also for you guys to like and subscribe if you're liking this video so far. Okay, so it's just a dictionary and then it has, it's set to zero currently. And then the way you access it is you um, get that that's global variable and you say inventory dictionary and you say flower count and you're just adding one to the value that's there. And then we're setting that value to the label on the HUD. And this is going to be called um, on the on the update event in the um, I'll show you in a second. And then it's going to um, set that cell once we pick it up. Basically, it's going to set that cell to invisible, so it's going to be a negative one. So that tile will disappear. And so I'll show you the singleton here, which is the global 
So I'm loading that and I'm enabling it as a singleton. So it's just going to exist for me to connect to with the word global. So he moves around and as he moves around, he's picking up the flowers and that counter is going. Then he goes to the rocks and the rock counter is going. So something simple, I just wanted to show you how to see what's underneath the player. And that is being called in the physics process method here. So that check player clear environment that we just saw, that's that's where that's being called. So each each tick of the of the um, clock is calling that out. And then I'm just going to show you, um, I haven't commented out, but I'm going to set the, the open simplex noise to random. And I'm going to lower this environment chance. And so we see a different map here. And you see another one. So it's just it's just making different maps depending upon that open simplex noise. And it's also placing the rocks in random areas and placing the flowers in random areas as well. But the little lava pit there that's moving, it, it stays solid because that's that's hand uh, placed. Okay, now I want to go over how to set up a animated texture as a tile. So I have, if I go to here, right click on a folder, I can say new resource, and then I can pick animated texture. And then from there, uh, if I just click on the one I already have, I pick how many frames I want and how many frames per second it should go. So how fast and slow it is. Then I drag those textures into each one of those frames. And then I use that as a texture in the tile map. And it's a, a single tile. And then I also want to kind of overlap it with a kind of a frame. So I have a, a texture here that has kind of a transparent middle to it. And I want to set its z-index to 1 so it goes kind of on top of the other one. And this one is z-index of 0. And then I just paint that onto the screen itself using the uh, tile map tools. Well, I hope you like, you like this video. I appreciate you going all the way to the end. Um, if you have any questions, please add it in the comments and please like and subscribe. I want to show you one more thing I forgot. Um, if, the, if you set the thing to about half size, so let's say we instead of being 5, 512, we're going to do 256 and we run it again, you see that it makes it a smaller gray texture here, right? And the player can't get outside of that. And like, why do we, why, why can't he get out of that? And the reason for that is on the tile map, um, it has a collision. So let me show you that real quick. Go to the tile set here, click on here, click on just anywhere inside this one. I go to this tab called collision, and then I drag little squares around these eight shapes here. So I just go to this little, uh, rectangle here, drag it across, hit the rectangle again, drag it across over and over again, and that puts a collision shape on there that the player kinetic, kinematic body will hit and stop them from going out. All right, I think that's it. I'm going to set it back to the big map. I uh, appreciate it, guys. I'll see you next time.